is Undaunted Life, a man's podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Thompson. Let's get into it. All right, guys, last week uh, we saw a couple of very famous suicides, and so we have suicide back in the news. We kind of get this every now and then when we get these clusters of famous people that have killed themselves. So last week it was Anthony Bourdain and Kate Spade. So if you don't know who those people are, Anthony Bourdain is a celebrity uh, chef and a TV personality, a very, very well-known guy, uh, CNN hosts, a lot of different things. And then Kate Spade, another American, uh, she is a clothing and accessories designer, and she created... She basically became a tycoon in this area. So both of them uh, killed themselves last week. And so it kind of put suicide back into the American consciousness and back into the general conversation. And this is just the latest in uh, a rash of suicides that we've seen. And also, these aren't the first two famous people that have killed themselves, obviously. So really, in the recent past, we've had Robin Williams, you know, world famous actor and comedian kill himself. Uh, Chester Bennington of Lincoln Park. He's the lead singer of Lincoln Park and Chris Cornell, who is the lead singer of Soundgarden and Audio Slave, and also did some stuff on his own. All those people killed themselves recently. And then we can even look back in history and think about very, very famous people that that took their own lives. So we have Kurt Cobain, lead singer of Nirvana, and then you have Marilyn Monroe, who's you know just a cultural icon in about a thousand different ways. Ernest Hemingway, an American novelist, and then even Vincent Van Gogh, who was a painter, killed himself in his 30s. So um, it's certainly not the first time that we've seen incredibly famous people or renowned people or things like that take their own lives. Um, but the thing is about these suicides is, are these suicides blips on the radar? Or are they part of a larger trend? I think that's that's kind of the thing. Every time we see anything happen in modern society, so whether that's you know um, a, a blip in the stock market, or maybe there's a school shooting, or maybe there's something that happens in the news, we're always looking to see if there's a trend coming because everyone wants to be on the good side of a trend, right? You don't want to live in Tornado Alley and not have a plan for a storm shelter. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of one of those things you would like to be out ahead of things, but. The thing with these celebrity suicides we have to ask ourselves is, are they only important because of their recognizable names and faces? Is that the only reason why these deaths are important? But here's the thing is when we start to dig into the stats about suicide and specifically suicide in the United States, it's it's kind of frightening. And it kind of shows otherwise that these suicides are not just blips on the radar or things that just completely came out of left field. So um, actually just recently... The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, they released some stats. There was a very, very long study done on suicide rates in the United States. And so this study looked at the different suicidality tendencies in all 50 states from 1999 until 2016. And it was just published semi-recently. And here's the frightening thing. I'm going to run through kind of a rash of statistics here because I want to kind of give you a sense of what we're dealing with. Because I remember for me growing up, suicide was, was never really something that I had to deal with, you know, no one in my family passed away because of that. Like no one, uh, that I knew closely kind of took their own life or anything like that. So it's just, it never really was part of my general consciousness. So, but here's some of those statistics. So in terms of the entire United States during that period of time, which is a meaningful period of time, suicides are up 25% across the entire United States. And it's up over 30% in over half of the United States states. So, so obviously basically what, what that means is 25 or, you know, 25 or more, I I think it was around 30 different um, states, their suicide rates had gone up over 30% during this time period. So that's a pretty incredible statistic and we'll keep going with these. And uh, basically suicides are up in every single state in the union, except except for Nevada. And so the thing with Nevada is basically that that state was always higher than average in terms of suicidality. And so that's not really the the best thing to look at, even though, you know, we're happy that the suicide rates have gone down in that state. That was always a state that was fairly elevated when it came to that type of statistic. Um, The state where it went up the least was in Delaware, which was only up by 6%. But in North Dakota, it was up 57%. I mean, just let that sink in. Suicidality went up in North Dakota by 57%. But North Dakota wasn't really the only state that had this huge upturn. There were several states that were kind of in this this last bracket in the CDC statistics where it was 43.2% increase or more. And those states were Idaho, Nebraska, North Dakota, New Hampshire, South Dakota, Utah, and Vermont. So a lot of states are kind of dealing with this. Um, Uh, Suicide went up 70% for white children. Uh, Suicide went up 77% for black children. 
The highest probability of suicide in terms of race and age are white males ages 14 to 21. And the highest probability of suicide attempts categorically are transgender people, which is about 41%, which is an unbelievable statistic when you think about it. 41% of transgender people try to take their own lives. So we'll get into a little bit more as to why that maybe is later in this podcast. As of right now in the United States, suicide is now the 10th leading cause of death. I mean, and when you start considering some of the other causes of death, that's an unbelievable statistic. That's now a top 10 cause of death. And there's really only two other things that are increasing markedly in terms of death in the United States. And the other two are Alzheimer's disease and drug overdoses. So drug overdose, overdoses, that's, you know, has a definite corollary with the opioid ep- epidemic that's happening right now. And so that's something that's uh, really important for us all to think about is where this is landing. And even recently, the Washington Post had an article where there was a quote in there where it was basically talking about... About, this is moving from being a mental health problem to being a public health problem, which is a pretty incredible statement when you break it down, because you can just kind of, as you're skimming an article, you can kind of just pass over that. But really there's a mental health problem that we see that leads to a lot of the suicides that we're seeing. And we'll talk more about that here in just a second. But when you start to categorize something as a public health problem, it, it becomes a massive issue. And you, you don't just say that. You don't just throw that out there flippantly so that more people will talk about whatever subject it's important to you. This is something that's real. You can't really ignore something that's in the top 10 of deaths in the United States. You can't really ignore that. It's something that you really, really have to put your mind to and start thinking about. Now, a, a lot of people immediately, whenever they saw the CDC statistics, they wanted to kind of think about, okay, well, what are the reasons for this, right? Obviously, We've seen the outcomes of something, but we need to figure out what that something is. And so there's a lot of reasons that have been given and pondered, some better than others. And I'll kind of go through a few of those now. One of them people thought was is that poverty was a, a, a big reason why suicide is increasing. But that doesn't really hold any water. It's not really correlated. We can't really point to any statistics that would lead us to that assumption. And the reason is, is because we're living in probably the most prosperous time in the history of the country. Right. I mean, I mean, obviously, say what you will about Trump and the Trump administration and what's happening in the economy right now, what it did under Obama, what it did under Bush, whatever. This is probably the the greatest time to be an American in terms of what it can mean for your bank account right now. And there's just not a correlation with people that are in poverty that are killing themselves. There's a potential correlation, and this is a maybe, it's it's kind of a false, that if you had a lot of wealth and then things went wrong and then you lost it all, that there might be a correlation there. But again, it's not that great. Um, people have talked a lot about bullying. So there's been a lot of hubbub made about uh, the, the epidemic of bullying, which I, I agree with. You know, I was someone that was bullied. I was an overweight kid and, you know, I was, it was an easy target in a lot of ways. And so that's just kind of one of those things, like I understand that, but again, there's not really a great broad sense correlation between bullying and suicide. There's just not. Now there, before anyone starts getting mad, there are individual cases where kids were mercilessly bullied and those kids ended up taking their lives. But again, that was an internal decision that they made, which could have been added to the fact that they may have had depression to begin with. Right. And so But there's not really anything that we can look at substantively that says, look, bullying causes suicides in this kind of broad sense. People talked about social isolation. There's some correlation there that once people isolate themselves or become socially isolated, which I, again, is a form of bullying, that there is a a slight correlation there. Uh, Mental health, it's a yes, but it's it's like a yes, kind of. Uh, here's the thing about the mental health is the overwhelming majority of suicide victims had undiagnosed mental disorders. I, one of the stats I saw said as high as like 90% of people that ended up kill, ending up killing themselves, they ended up killing themselves. And it was in addition to the fact that they had a mental disorder. And that's probably what led them to actually take that action. Cause again, this is an individual action. No one can else can kill you for you, right? Like in, this is outside the realms of murder and euthanasia and those different things. If you've chosen to kill yourself, that is a singular action. But if you have clinical depression and it goes undiagnosed and then you're bullied, yeah, that, that's a horrible cocktail for you to take down. Like it, it's just, it's really, really bad news. But the thing is, is clinical depression, there's a direct correlation between having clinical depression where you need to be on some si- type of medication and suicidality. There's a, there's a direct connection there. But also there's some that are a little bit less scientific and maybe a little bit more uh, theoretical, but decline in community. 
Again, we talk about social media a lot and how we're super connected, but uh, being on Facebook is not a community, right? And you may be in a group and all these people are kind of getting together, but you're, but you're not with them in person. You're not really going through life with them. You're just kind of keeping up with them in terms of kind of whatever they post. There's also a decline in religiosity. You know, we're, we're declining in terms of the religious nature that most of us operate with. You know, a lot of churches are suffering in terms of their numbers. Um, you know, we talk about uh, Christianity specifically, how it's kind of being pushed out into the edges of society. And it's not really being allowed into the public square as much. So uh, that's correlated, potentially. We, we have a little bit of a correlation there, but also us being the center of our universe. That's what we've been told for so long now is that we are at the center of everything, right? The world revolves around us and our happiness and our ability to keep pain out of our lives. There's a correlation there as well. And and there's a lot of studies in here and I didn't want to bore you guys with a a ton of statistics because I knew I was going to go ahead and load a bunch of those up. But what all this leads to is is we have several problems. And so as as I'm kind of looking at suicide and as I was researching for this podcast, but also just things that I've kind of picked up over the years, there's there's several issues that I've kind of come come to figure out with what's going on with suicide. And it's just problems that I think may be exacerbating our issues here. The first problem is that we tend to re- romanticize suicide. And I have no idea why this is, but but we do tend to romanticize it, right? So so Kate Spade, obviously the, the designer that killed herself last week, if, if you're listening to this on time, it was last week. She was obsessed with the suicide of Robin Williams. I mean, completely obsessed with it. That's, that's kind of the reports that we've seen kind of come out because he was this gigantic, larger than life comedian that brought happiness to so many people, but apparently had such internal darkness that it overwhelmed him. But the thing about it is, is, is when you think about the things that were attached to Robin Williams, it's not that crazy to, to think that someone could be, uh, you know, obsessed with this. And this is just the first person we know of because she was famous that killed herself. And, you know, there was a direct corollary. So I don't know if you'll remember back to right after uh, Robin Williams took his own life, uh, the Academy, which is, you know, the Academy Awards, that Academy, they sent out this tweet and it was a picture of Aladdin and Genie, right? So Robin Williams obviously was the voice of Genie from the movie Aladdin. It's them hugging. And the caption simply said, Genie, you're free. So a quote from the movie of the movie, Genie, you're free. And and I remember the first time I saw that tweet, I was like, oh man, that's that's awesome. Like, yeah, that that's really apropos. I think that that was nicely, nicely done and well done. But almost immediately I reflected on it a little bit further and I was like, wait a minute. Like, he didn't just die in a car accident. He didn't die of cancer. This this guy took his own life. And but it was just kind of this romantic thing about, oh, he's free now. So if, if he if you're going through internal darkness as opposed to getting help and getting better, uh, maybe it was better for him that he just become free. So I thought that was strange. But also, ironically, um, he was in a movie called Dead Poets Society. He was one of the main characters in that movie. And in that movie, it's, it's really a fantastic film. But my least favorite thing about that film is it glorifies and romanticizes suicide. So the character in the film, one of the kind of the ringleaders of the young boys, it's the high school boys that are in this film is Neil Perry. That's the that's the character's name. He ends up killing himself. Well, spoiler alert. He ends up killing himself at the end of the, the book. He he or the book, the movie. He ends up using his father's pistol to shoot himself in the head, kills himself because, you know, his father didn't want him to be in this play. And he ended up wanting to be in theater anyway, you know, kind of a long convoluted story. If you haven't watched that movie by now, sorry, I just blew it for you. But this is a movie that Robin Williams was in where, you know, suicide was seen as this incredibly romantic thing. Yes, it was kind of portrayed tragically, but also romantically. I I remember whenever I watched this, because I just watched this movie a few years ago, a buddy of mine asked me what I thought about it. And he's kind of a a movie critic, artsy type of guy. And I was like, man, it was a great film, but I, I really couldn't stand the fact that it all kind of hinged on the suicide of a teenager. Because he just couldn't stand it that his parents wouldn't let him lead the life that he wanted to live. Like, I just didn't really like that part of it. So that's kind of the the first problem I see is that it's really romanticizing suicide. That's what we're doing as a society. But also a second problem that I see is we don't call it suicide as much as we should. Like, we're just not calling it suicide. I think even earlier in this podcast, I, I may have even caught myself. I think I said, you know, someone passed away. But the thing is, is we almost euphemistically describe it as death right? Or, or passing away or something like that. But just think about how weird that sounds. Because some of you, maybe when I said that, it just didn't sound weird. It's like, yeah, well, they died. So they're, they're clearly dead. But what if I said, uh, you know, the Nazis, uh, there were just 6 million dead Jews, right? They just died as opposed to being murdered by the Nazis, right? You know, on 9-11, 2001, 3,000 Americans died 
as opposed to being murdered, right? A- Abraham Lincoln died while watching a play. Like that just wouldn't really ring true because of what we know about those situations. And even think about a personal story. What if you've lost a a close family member to murder and someone were to say, oh yeah, you know, when your brother died or or when your mom uh, passed away, it's like, well, it's kind of an incomplete story. They were murdered. That's kind of an important detail that we need to throw out there. And, And the thing about it is, is whenever we don't call it suicide, we end up running into other issues. So I, I didn't mention this on the gun podcast I did, but basically a lot of gun violence statistics that you see on the news, especially on more left-leaning news sites, they don't distill the statistics down to not include suicides. And I'm sure most of you would agree with me that there is a gigantic difference between me walking around the mall with a pistol and shooting people indiscriminately or sitting in my closet at my house and putting the pistol in my mouth and blowing my brains out, right? Those are, those are definitely different things. There, there are deaths that are going to be involved with both actions, but, but one is inflicting murder on self versus inflicting murder on others. And so a lot of the statistics that we see in terms of gun violence, they're, they're almost a majority of them are coming from suicides, but, but we don't really see that, right? Because we just look at it as gun violence, right? It's not gun murder or gun suicide. It's kind of different. And even if you go to Kate Spade's website, I was kind of, you know, going through and just seeing what, what people were saying. If you go to her website on the homepage, It says, the very first line there says, Kate Spade, the visionary founder of our brand, has passed. Like, you know, she just passed calmly in her sleep. Like, it was just sort of something. I just think it's weird that we're not calling it suicide. It's like we're we're trying to, to soften the blow of what these people have done to themselves. And I don't think it's really doing anybody any favors. And a third problem I see is something that's already been coined as a phrase called the Werther effect. So that's Werther, W-E-R-T-H-E-R. So it's kind of also known as copycat suicides. That's basically the emulation of someone else's suicide. And so the name of this comes from uh, Goethe novel, uh, The Sorrows of Young Werther. And this was uh, produced in 1774. That's when it was released. And in this novel, the main character Werther shoots himself with a pistol after he's rejected by the woman that he loves. And so obviously, you know, kind of a romanticized thing within the story. But what happened after the release of this story was was fairly incredible. Uh, After the publication, young men all over Europe began committing suicide. Like these men that had been rejected, these young boys or men that had been rejected by women, they finally saw this as a potential for them. It's like, oh, I, you know, I'm in pain right now and I don't want to feel this pain. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to actually take my life. There were actually reports of men that were wearing, you know, walking around wearing the clothes that the main character of this book, you know, wore before he killed himself. Right. And, and the thing is, is, is we don't just see this because of this Goethe novel. We see it a lot of different places. So even the Wall Street Journal this week, they said uh, after celebrity deaths, I mean, there it goes again, they called it deaths, but after celebrity deaths, suicide hotline calls jump 25%. This was just reported in the last couple of days. And so, you know, people are killing themselves literally all the time, but it's whenever these celebrities do it, it's like, oh, everyone's consciousness, you know, perks up a little bit. But the thing is, is after celebrity suicides, especially depending upon how big the celebrity is, there's almost always a spike in suicides across the country that, you know, they're kind of referred to as suicide clusters. But after Marilyn Monroe killed herself again, icon while she was living and now an icon until literally time ends, you know, there was a spike in suicides and it can be directly correlated to her taking her own life. There's also this concept of suicide contagion. So this is where, you know, publicized suicides and the details of which kind of trigger people that are susceptible to to suicidal actions or thoughts, right? It's just like, that's what they needed. That was the contagion that they needed in order to kind of go, go through with this issue. So there are other problems here when we're talking about suicide, but those are the three that I really wanted to point out. But there's kind of one overarching real problem. And it kind of goes to the main question that, that I want to pose for this podcast. And that question is, is, is why we kill ourselves. You know, that's the name of the podcast, you know, and it's why, why do we kill ourselves? And a lot of people would probably disagree with this, but this is the reason why I think we're killing ourselves and why it's going up. And it's because people are trying to find fulfillment outside of God. That's the best thing that I can come up with because, because there are 
you know, sociologists and psychologists and even, even economists that are trying to answer the question of suicide. But I feel like as Christians, we kind of know. We know what's happening here. And so a quote that, that came up for me was one from, from Francis Schaeffer, and I've used this in a lot of different areas of my life, but uh, he was referencing moral relativism or the people that are rarely propagating that, so moral relativists. But this was his quote, and it says, The moral relativists are those who have both feet firmly planted in midair. Both feet firmly planted in midair. I think that's great, and it's really going to lead kind of the rest of, of my philosophy here on this. But most of us find fulfillment outside of God, right? We just do. And those are the things that we desire and those are the things that we strive for. So we find fulfillment in success, whatever we define success to, to be. We find fulfillment in, in money, in achievement, in athletic prowess. We find it in our ability to you know, woo women, in influencing people, in our friendships, our relationships. That's where we look for fulfillment. But here's the thing. When these people kill themselves, I, I think they're asking themselves a question, whether they're doing it out loud or in a journal or something. I feel like this question is being asked. They're asking themselves, why am I here? Right? That's the existential question that we all ask at some point, right? Why am I here? Why am I, why am I existing? And the thing about it is, is if it's rooted in the things that I mentioned earlier, your answer to that is rooted in success and money and sports and chicks and all those different things. It's rooted in nothing. And, and anyone that's been around long enough or ex has experienced life long enough, we know that to be true, even though we all still kind of strive for it, right? But th this is the thing I always got to ask, and this is where I, you know, try to come to grips with people that are atheists or agnostic, is if God doesn't exist and this wasn't all created, then what does it matter? Like, honestly, what does it matter if people kill themselves? Why does it matter if people murder each other? If we're in the survival of the fittest mantra, right? I mean, if we're just clumps of stardust bouncing off of other clumps of stardust, you know, if we're just highly evolved monkeys that wear pants, if, if we're just literally the product of time plus matter plus chance, why does it matter? Like, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I mean, because here's, here's the thing, we're in the West and the West keeps moving away from God. And, you know, Christendom, obviously, it keeps getting pushed to the fringes, as I mentioned earlier in this podcast. We can assume that these trends are going con to continue. There's nothing to say that we're going to have this massive resurgence of Christianity and Christian thinking and, and Christian enlightenment within our culture. And there's also nothing saying that we're going to be seeing all these suicide rates come down. There's, there's more focus and there's more funding for suicide prevention than there ever has been, and suicide keeps going up. There's more awareness of mental health and the issues they're in, and there's more mental health treatment right now in the U.S. than there ever has been, and these things are still going up. But I just want to kind of even go back to, to something we did earlier, and again, in the future, I promise I'm going to do an entire episode on transgenderism and kind of the issues uh, for a Christian as we're kind of operating in the sphere where people think that this is an acceptable lifestyle. But 41% of people that are transgendered try to kill themselves. 41%. It's a, I mean, it's literally a coin flip, and I don't mean to, to patronize anyone that's, that's in that or make that you know, comment flippantly. It's just that is what it is. It's kind of a coin flip. And, it, and this is the reason why I think that's so. If I, if I had to make a blanket statement here, so bear with me. If I had to make a blanket statement, it's because their entire life came down to their identity, Th their personal identity, who they are, and who they think they are. They were born a boy and they just know that they're a girl. In their heart, in their soul, they can feel it in their bones that they are a girl. You know, they were born female, but, but they just know every day that they wake up that they're actually a boy. Like, they're a male. Like, that the ether or God or something got it wrong and gave them the wrong sexual organs, right? So, we have somebody that wakes up with those thoughts every single day. And society tells them, you know, it's okay. You know, let's, let's start giving you these hormone blockers or maybe their parents did or, or, or maybe their, their doctor suggested they do so. And they start to kind of make those transitions, right? They start the process of quote unquote transitioning. But then eventually they go through with the operation. You know, the operation to change their sexual organs, right? 
to, to kind of solidify th their ability to, you know, stamp their flag in the ground and be like, no, this is who I am and I'm going to go make me happen. And then they heal up and some time probably goes by and they realize they're just as empty as they were before. They're exactly as empty as they were before. And they got everything that they wanted. They got societal acceptance of their choices and their actions. They got the actions actually physically done, but something's missing. What's missing? What could possibly be missing? Like, so that's why I ask people that are, you know, trans activists or things like that is, is if they go through with all that and they're still morbidly depressed, what's the deal there? They got everything they wanted. You're there cheering them on the whole time. Like, what's the deal? The reality is, is that they've planted their feet firmly in midair. They've anchored themselves to nothing. Or, or they've anchored themselves to something, but that something is self. What they think in their finite brain, what they think they're, a, they're able to do and what they need to do in order to be happy, whatever that word means to them. So that's the reason that I think a lot of these suicides are happening right now is because people are in this very materialistic, you know, evolutionary biological mindset that we are basically highly evolved monkeys and we just need to make ourselves as happy and comfortable as possible. And we don't live a life of sacrifice. We don't live a life of servitude to a higher purpose. And I don't mean the Boy Scouts or, you know, uh, you know, your fraternity or, you know, this, this civic group or your Sunday school. That's not what I mean. I mean, the higher purpose of serving a creator God, an unmovable mover. And so it makes perfect sense that these people would, would stop moving in the direction of that. And so, again, some people may think that I'm oversimplifying it and, you know, perhaps I am. But that is my opinion as to what we're seeing, because the, the statistics are clear in a lot of different areas. And there is a corollary, but between people that have high religious affiliation, they don't tend to kill themselves nearly at the rate that people without religious affiliation do. OK, and this isn't some sort of commercial for religiosity and, you know, Christianese and all those different things. But when we lose God in society, there are things that happen. Look at the 20th century. The, the, the bloodiest century we've ever seen in the 19th century, Frederick Nietzsche, you know, pr predicted the, the, the death of God. He pretty much talked about how God had died and that we killed him. And he predicted that the 20th century was going to be the bloodiest century in the history of the planet Earth. And he was right in spades. Millions and millions and millions and millions of people died because of atheistic regimes that had put the value of human life so low that they were able to kill them in the tens of millions. Just think about that. So if you're trying to answer the question of why am I here and the best answer society can give you is so that you can be happy, then if you can never find happiness, then you just need to not exist anymore. That's the direct correlation. Now, I don't believe that, but that's kind of how people operate. So I want to move this podcast in the direction of a message to people who are considering this. Okay. So with the number of people that listen to this podcast, and I'm thankful for every last one of you, I can't assume that all of you are okay in this area. This is my message to you. If you're considering hurting yourself or if you're considering suicide, don't, don't do it. Oh, Doug. No, no, no. I mean it. Don't, don't do it. You are worth something. Your life is valuable. Don't do this. So many times we, we put on kid gloves and we just, you know, we try to talk to people and it's just like, oh, you know, you maybe you really shouldn't do that. And we, we kind of paw at people. And it's like, dude, stop being a pussy. Just don't, don't do that. Like that's not for you to do. Do not do that. Satan is all over you right now. Don't let him win. You are worthy of life. You're worthy of being here because you're still here. You're still alive. God can still use you. And at this moment, I, I just want to just rain down scripture on you. And I just, I'm going to say a bunch of scriptures at once and I'm just going to blow right through and I'm not going to set them up with context or tell you who set them or anything. You can rewind this podcast, go back and look it up later. I just want something to hook in your brain. And for those of you listening that maybe have someone in your life that's struggling in this area that you may be able to remember this and refer it out to them. So I'm just going to, going to launch in here. So first one, Isaiah 41, 10. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold hold you with my righteous right hand. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. John 10, 10. The thief comes to only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. 
That's Jesus. Psalm 55, 22. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Romans 8, 38, 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heights nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Psalm 34, 18 and 19. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. And then the last one here, guys, I know it's kind of trite now, which is kind of crazy, but it's the most famous scripture on the planet. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's what your life is worth, guys. Your life is worth something. It was worth so much that God sacrificed his only son so that he could reclaim you from death and from sin, okay? And so, so guys, if you need to talk to somebody, I'm talking about you specifically, listening to this right now, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is out there for you. It's 1-800-273-TALK. So that's 1-800-273-8255, 1-800-273-8255. Or you can reach out to me directly. Seriously, send me an email, info at Undaunted Life. Info at undaunted.life, excuse me, info at undaunted.life. Send me an email. I'll give you my phone number. We'll chat. Like we'll, we'll try to figure something out. Talk to a pastor at, at your church. Talk to a pastor at any church. Just walk into one if you're not a member somewhere. Just walk into one. Be like, I need to talk to somebody. I need help. I guarantee you they're going to help you out. Okay. But, but here's the other thing, guys, is <clears throat> I want to shift this to be the message for everybody else. So this is the message for everyone else that has not struggled with suicide, right? You're listening to this. You've never had these thoughts. It's never occurred to you. You need to be watchful and you need to be active. You need to be watching for the signs that someone might be able to do this, right? Because here's the thing. Here's the reality is, yes, I provided that that phone number earlier and <coughs> excuse me. And a lot of people have called that number. But most people considering this, considering suicide, need someone else's help, but they will almost never ask for it. Like they're not going to call a hotline necessarily. And so you have these people that do kind of cry for help suicide attempts. Like they, they sort of kind of try to kill themselves, but it's mainly just to get attention. You've heard of that. But sometimes that leads to death. Sometimes they're just, they go too far with it. Right. So I want to point out some some signs of potential suicide. And this is just something that I, I got off the Internet. It was like the Journal of Times or something like that. But it's 12 signs that you could look for in your friends or family or coworkers or whatever that will kind of help you understand if you need to maybe step in and ask them the question. So it's just 12 things and they're really quick. So I'll just burn through them. So if they start feeling like a burden, if they're being isolated, if they have increased anxiety, feeling trapped or in unbearable pain increased substance use or abuse, looking for a way to access lethal means, uh, increased anger or rage, extreme mood swings, expressing hopelessness, sleeping too little or too much, talking or posting on the internet about wanting to die, and finally making plans for suicide. Okay. So this is something that I want you all to kind of be aware of and be looking for these signs in the people that you care about. And here's the biggest thing is don't be the guy that doesn't say anything, right? Because because in all these stories that we've heard, especially the celebrity stories about suicide, we always hear about the family members that just didn't realize anything was going on. Or, you know, they had noticed that they weren't eating as much, but they didn't really think anything of it. Or parents that have found a suicide note, but they didn't want to potentially make their child angry by bringing it up to them and thinking it might kind of throw them into a tizzy or a rage. And so they don't say anything. You do not get that. You don't get that excuse, okay? Like if you hear about something that's going on or you see any of these signs in your friends, just launch out, launch out and ask them, okay? And think about it. So those are things that I want you to be able to be thinking about at this moment. So guys, at this point of the podcast, I'd normally do a quick resilience boost, but you know, I just want to kind of leave this space open. And so we're not going to do a, a quick resilience boost right now because um, I just want to make sure that you guys have some time to really reflect on this and think about anyone in your life that is struggling in this way. Because not all of us are that perceptive and we don't walk into situations and think, oh, that person's hurting. I should probably say something. A lot of us are really, really busy, right? Like that's the new American Olympic sport is busyness. And so we just kind of blow through life and we can never really think about, well, that was kind of weird when my son did that. Or gosh, that was weird when my buddy from work was talking that way. 
I want you to just kind of take this time to, to reflect on that. All right. So just reflect on those types of people and see if there's somebody that you might be able to help. And, and you, the thing is, guys, is that doesn't mean there's going to be some sort of lifetime movie, big explosion of excitement and and you're going to, you know, dramatically save someone's life and, you know, they're going to owe their life to you. It doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen. But maybe you just asking the question will help someone realize, man, there are people that are out there that are noticing me. I'm not completely isolated. I'm not completely out there on my own. So I want you guys to be thinking about that. Okay. So thanks as always for listening to the end of the podcast. I really do appreciate it. Please subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Google Play and refer your friends to listen and share this on social media. If you use the hashtag Undaunted Life, we'll be sure to find it and give it a thumbs up or a like. If we deserve a five-star review for this podcast, please leave us one. That's how we're going to be able to continue to grow. So please do that for us. I'm currently booking speaking engagements for 2018 and the very beginning of 2019. So if you want me to come speak to your team, to your Sunday school, to your retreat, to your camp, to whatever, please hit me up, info at undaunted.life. Again, info at undaunted.life. Our website is www.undaunted.life and you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Undaunted Life and on Facebook.com backslash Undaunted Life. And you can check out our free devotionals on the YouVersion Bible app. Just search Undaunted Life under plans. And as always, we want to thank the band August Burns Red for allowing us to use their music library for our content. The intro outro track on this podcast is their song King of Sorrow, which is off their latest record entitled Phantom Anthem. The links to all this are in the description. I'm your host, Kyle Thompson. Remember, Keep cultivating manly resilience. Keep forging spiritual, mental, and physical toughness. Keep seeking the Lion of Judah. Whoa, whoa.